Zen practice looks like it's about getting still and quiet. That's one aspect of Zen. But really, Zen is about learning to travel, learning to move, learning to move more gracefully through our lives and through easy and difficult situations. Zen's cool. Zen should be cool. We come to the Zen Center, we come to the meditation hall, to the Zendo, and we cool out. Uh, we cool our passions, we cool our, um, our loves, our hates, and try to manifest a, uh, an aspect of ourselves that doesn't have any thought or worry. But then, in the Zen tradition, we also have to learn to be warm. And sometimes people get caught, I think, in that Zen cool. So they leave the meditation hall and they're very cool a lot of the time. Uh, the Zen that I learned was also warm. So we, it's our practice to meditate, and then it's our practice to leave the meditation and to connect more fully with others. Sometimes when I use the word emptiness, I worry because it's, uh, it's such a negative, it has such a negative connotation. It sounds so bad. Who wants to be empty? I'd rather be full. But whenever I say the word emptiness now, I try to say emptiness of self. It's not as if we're um, casting ourselves into the void or that there's some emptiness out there in the world. Emptiness in Buddhism really means emptiness of self. And even though maybe that doesn't sound so good, but what we learn in Buddhism after having done it in Zen Buddhism is that emptiness, when we empty ourselves, we fill up with everything, with everything we meet. And that that emptiness of self actually um, acquaints us with an aspect of ourselves that's there all the time. And that can be a very big help in our lives to realize both our self and our no self. What I hope for boils down to truth and love. And I think Zen offers that to a practitioner. The truth, roughly speaking, very simply put, is that we have a, another nature, you might say a more fundamental nature, than our regular everyday selves. Uh, we call it Buddha nature sometimes. And that that's an aspect of ourselves that's covered over, that's hidden, and this practice allows us to manifest that aspect. So it discovers the truth of that aspect. And that aspect can also tell us a lot about our lives, about the way in which we construct our lives, um, the way in which the world is constructed. So it's a very, uh, very helpful um, aspect. Then there's love. Finding truth without love is one-sided. It's important that this practice lead us to a place in which we care about other people, in which we help other people more ably than we did before. And I think this practice really can help with that. As we become more settled, as we become, uh, as we open our minds and also our hearts 
to uh, our surroundings and the people around us. Uh, there is a way in which we um, can love more open-heartedly.